Our Lord in today's Gospel presents Himself in a very special way. He presents Himself as the ruler of the elements and the conqueror of all tempests. Now it was when this incident took place, it was the evening after a long day's work for our Messiah and for His Apostles. Our Lord had been preaching the gospel for many hours and had worked many miracles and many cures. And now they were all tired. So he tells his disciples to board their little ship and they would cross the lake of Genezareth. And as soon as they did that, and as they did that rather, the waters were perfectly calm. But the lake of Genezareth Genezareth was known for one thing, and that was that at any moment the winds could pick up and a terrible and violent storm could come out of nowhere. And so all of the fishermen and the ships that were in the water always knew this was a possibility and were always on guard. Well, our Lord and the apostles got stuck in such a storm. The winds began to intensify. The waters became rougher and rougher until it formed waves, which not only crashed into the side of the boat, but as the gospel itself tells us, the waves engulfed the boat. The water was just pouring in into this this small ship. You can imagine, if you, if you picture it as a real-life incident, which it was, imagine the fear, imagine the anxiety and the worry of these men as they struggled to just stay alive, to just stay alive long enough to make it across this lake to the other shore. Now, the ship upon which they were can be taken as a symbol of Holy Mother Church. And the waves, in this case, symbolize all of the persecutions that the church has ever had to undergo. And these waves, these persecutions, become so terrible and so violent that they threaten to sink the bark of Peter. It was the bloody persecutions in the first three centuries of the church. So many were martyred that yet so many converted. And Tertullian said that the blood of the martyrs was the seed of Christians. So many were put to death, yet even more converted to the faith. We think of England, where good, holy men who held to the primacy of the of the Pope were put to death. St. Thomas More and the like. We think of the attack of Martin Luther on the church and how most of Europe was lost because of this one man. And we cannot help but think of the persecution, although not bloody, the persecution of our present day with the Novus Ordo. Not only have they stripped the church of its sacraments, not only have they stripped us of the very buildings and institutions which are by right ours, but they steal souls from us and then they steal the priesthood from us and then they make a mockery of the priesthood that they have already stolen. So that now in the eyes of the world, it is all scandal and sin and leading souls to hell. This is one of the worst forms of persecution that the church has ever seen in its 2,000 years of existence. But the ship can also be taken as a symbol of the individual soul which must endure trial, temptation, and passion. Today, 
we have the custom of naming every hurricane and of na naming every severe winter storm anymore, so too the storms and tempests that trouble our soul and threaten to destroy it are named. They are pride, ambition, vanity and covetousness, anger, envy, enmity, and impatience. All these storms have a name, and they will, the waves will beat against the soul and threaten to engulf it. And if these spiritual tempests are allowed to grow, if we allow them to grow in our hearts, they will cause a stirring so violent, so terrible, that they will totally engulf the soul and destroy the ship of our soul. But these waves might also be trials which beat against the soul, not simply temptations, but trials. Trials which we must simply endure, even as the apostles who had to wait out the storm. In times as these, we must call to mind the principles of faith, when we must endure trial and pain and suffering. We must call these principles to mind. First, that every single struggle and, and tem tempest is willed, or at least permitted, by the wisdom of God, who has ordered all things. Everything that happens in this world is a result of God's infinite love for us. And so if he permits sorrow, should he permit trial, personal or public chaos and vicissitudes, as they call them, it is only for some greater good that he allows this, that he permits it. Secondly, he permits these trials to, because virtue and goodness are strengthened not in times of peace, but in times of war, when we must endure. If he allowed us to have a comfortable, cozy life, we would never advance in virtue. If modernism did not exist, we would have no Pope St. Pius X. If the morals of the clergy were not corrupt, in the 1500s, we would not have a St. Charles Borromeo. And if England had not, uh, had not left the primacy of the Pope and followed their king as the leader of their church, then we would not have a St. Thomas more. Trial makes saints of us. But returning to the event in today's Gospel, throughout all of this, the huge storm, the fear of the apostles. What do we read next? That Jesus was sleeping. He was sleeping when everyone else was frantic. The apostles were near death. Fear overwhelmed them, and they found themselves in a panic, and Jesus was sleeping. They must have thought, that our Lord at that moment was completely oblivious to their danger. But th that was not the case. It says that he, our Lord slept as man, but as God, his heart was always watching. He knew of every struggle and every danger that the apostles were going through that day. And so for us, sometimes it seems that when we're struggling in our life, that God simply sleeps. He permits the church to struggle, to endure scandal. He permits you to suffer, almost to the point of despairing, and he sleeps. Perhaps he sleeps to show the calmness and peace that we should have in times of trial. 
but he sleeps to give us time to exercise virtue. If we are disturbed and upset when trial comes into our life, remember this, that it is because we lack faith. We must be assured that in our trials, God will not leave us. He is there beside those who are suffering. Next, it says in the Gospel that the apostles then began crying out to our Lord, Lord, save us, we perish. Notice that as long as the apostles worked by themselves and tried to come up with a solution by themselves, they had no success. It was only after they had awakened our Lord and prayed to Him that they found success. And so in our life, the reason why we fail so often in the spiritual life or in any of our undertakings or difficulties, why we fail to be patient under the cross and to overcome temptation is because we try it alone first. And then only secondly, pray to God. God wishes us then to experience all of our helplessness. He lets us struggle until we have recourse to Him with the greatest confidence. That's why He sleeps. He simply wants you to pray to Him with confidence. God certainly wants us to try our best in all of our trials, but He does not want us to place all of our hope in our own efforts This is why we make so little progress, because we trust in ourselves first. As soon as they prayed for help, our Lord did the seemingly impossible. He came up up to the top of the ship, and with a single command of His will, the wind ceased, and the waters, they were perfectly calm. They were not like the waters after a storm where it takes hours if not days for them to perfectly settle. As soon as he commanded them, the waters were as peaceful and as calm as if the storm had never taken place. And that is what will happen to your soul, to your passions, should you call upon our Lord with confidence. Now, this same God is right here in our tabernacle with all of His powers, with all of His knowledge, with all of His divinity. And in two weeks, we will open up 40 hours. 40 hours was instituted as a means to bring peace to the church and as a means of helping souls to advance in virtue. So there is our Lord, and this little church is our little ship on the sea of life. Come to it. Make it a point to come to as much of the 40 hours as you can. Pray for the peace of the church, the restoration of the church. Pray for your own needs and the needs of your loved ones. Because here is God. Don't go around the world thinking you can make the converts yourself by just talking. If you don't go to our Lord and say, Lord, save us, we perish. You will be, you will have to endure till the end those violent storms and the waves which will engulf you. May God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.